This video was shot at KublaCon 2014, the con of cons in Burlingame, California. Each Memorial Day weekend at KublaCon, you'll find enthusiastic excitement for gamers of all ages. From Pathfinder Society events to war college seminars to board, card, and role-playing games, KublaCon has it covered. Stop by KublaCon.com for more information, and be sure to look through all of our show coverage at OgreCave.com. Uh, this is Alan Sugarbaker with OgreCave.com, and I'm talking with Josh Qualtieri of Zombie Smith again. And this time, since we have video but no cameraman, we're just going to set it up there and go. Uh, but you've got a lot of projects going on now that Zombie Smith is your full-time gig. Yes. What do you want to start with? Uh, I, th- I guess we'll start with what we released this weekend at Kubicon, which is uh, Shield Bash, which is um, War of Ashes. We released last year's Shield Wall. It's sort of our um, Muppet Vikings, their own little apocalypse. Right. Yeah. Um, so last year we released Shield Wall, which is a mass battle game, and that's always hard. Hard for a new player to get into because you're know, like, wait, I need to spend you know all this money to get 40 to 60 figures, ah, right? So we always do it in the opposite. We always do the mass battle game and then the skirmish game. So Shield Bash is the skirmish game in the uh, the War of Ashes universe. So it's eight to 12 figures. Um, along with that, we release two new factions. We have the Atronians, which are um, the equivalent of the War of Ashes Amazons, okay. uh, and then the Kikak, which are little dragon men. Um, and so those are the two factions we added on top of the Vidar, the Alvorex, the Jarl, and the Cold. And, but we also added new units for all those. There's cavalry now and missile troops and right. some more monsters and all that stuff. And then it also adds the, the lions and tigers and bears of the War of Ashes universe, you know, the flora and fauna, the other stuff. So we'll be releasing figures uh, for all of that. So that's, that's new at the show. And then there's always new choir stuff. There's 15 millimeter choir, there's 6 millimeter choir, there's new 28 millimeter choir. The choir are my first love, so there's, yeah, there's yeah. always going to be some new stuff there. A teeny tiny choir that look like they yeah, disappear the little, if you sneeze. Yeah, a yeah. little, little 6 millimeter choir. We, we got to ask, hey, can you do 6 millimeter choir? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we could do that, sure. And, and it, uh, actually, it's, it's quite fun to work on. So, yeah. You're also planning a, a novel, correct? Yeah, so we got um, Carrie Harris, who's written several young adult novels. Um, she does a lot of work also with Evil Hat, that does the, the fate-based role-playing games. And oh, okay. She has written a... Um, we don't have a title for it yet. Uh, it's going through editing now. She's written a, a young adult novel in the War of Ashes universe. Um, it's not... It's uh, how to explain it? It's, um, it's not all warfare and that sort of thing. It's more of a, a slice of life between this, these two uh, critters in, in the War of Ashes universe. It, it's pretty good. It's, it's uh, delves into a little bit of the history, gives you some more backstory to the world and that sort of thing. So it's, it's not um, a super hardcore. She's got this interesting, um, sarcastic is not the right word, but her style sort of matches our style, right? So, so it fits our visuals and, and our, and our um, aesthetic. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty cool. Like I said, it's going through editing now. It should be out sometime this summer. Cool. Okay. Um, you, you also mentioned something with miniatures that you're working with another company now? Yeah. So, um, there's this company in New Zealand called uh, Flytrap Factory, uh, run by Anton. And he and I have a very similar style. Uh, it's sort of these cute creatures that are killing each other, doing horrible things. I, I call it grimsical, right? It's, it's gritty, yet it's whimsical. Um, and so we're always talking about, you know, working together on this, working together on that. And um, so he's actually the one sculpting the 6 millimeter choir infantry. I'm doing the vehicles. Um, and so we just got to talk, and we talk on Skype all the time now and via email. And he's way out in New Zealand, and it's it's hard to get people to order from him because shipping from New Zealand takes time. It costs money, um, and there's not a lot of shows, so he doesn't get a lot of exposure and that sort of thing. So a lot of people have never even heard of him, right? And I think he has awesome stuff. So we made the deal that Zombie Smith would become his distributor, basically, uh, through the U.S., Europe, you know, North America, South America, wherever. Um, and so he would basically send us the figures, but. That sort of evolved a little bit, and now he's sort of, he might get mad at me for this, he's sort of my staff sculptor. Um, There's Aaron Brown, who's still doing all the choir stuff and the shield wall stuff, although Anton has done a little bit of the shield wall stuff. But now, um, Flytrap is sort of 
coming under the zombie smith umbrella a little bit. I mean, it's sort of hard to explain. He's he's going to be sculpting for us, generating a ton of figures per month, as well as working on his own stuff. But we're going to sort of share the art direction. We're going to be writing rule books for him, which he's never really had time to do. Um, so my favorite line of his is Warpod, which is... Uh, these little sci-fi robots, they're kind of World War II looking robots, and so um, later this year we should have a Warpod book out, which will be uh, the first sort of flytrap zombie smith thing, and then he's got Netherworld's Edge, which is sort of like Mouse Guard and Red Wall, it's mice and rats and bats and badgers that, that are doing terrible things to each other. Um, so we're actually going to take Shield Wall and Shield Bash and modify them to, to work in, in that setting. So those will be the first two things from him, but then we're also... Uh, working on some stuff that's a joint venture. Um, so he'll be doing the sculpting, we'll be doing a lot of the art, we'll share the fluff, uh, that sort of thing. But, and that should be really cool because, again, it, you know, I think he brings a certain set of talents and we bring a certain set of talents, and I think they complement each other really well. And when they don't complement each other, they just add on top of each other. So I, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty exciting. It'll allow us... I mean, we're already fairly prolific for the size we are, and I think um, this is going to allow us to become even more prolific so we should we should be having huge releases every month uh, rather than every other month and that sort of thing so it, it's pretty exciting it's just really got off the ground I really I started shipping uh, flytrap stuff maybe two months ago starting with Netherworld's Edge and the Warpod stuff um, he's got uh, cavemen versus wild which are like these cute like sort of big meat cavemen and mastodons and saber tooth tigers and we're releasing those this month and then yeah there's just a ton of stuff Wow, great. Yeah. Just discovering little interesting sculptors is yeah. really fun and, and seeing yeah. their styles. Well, what's interesting is, so Aaron Brown has been working with me on the Quar for six or seven years now, uh, and has been working with me on the War of Ashes stuff for the past two or three years. Um, he's in New Zealand. Anton's in New Zealand. I think they're like 20 miles from each other. Oh. They've never met. Totally came at me from separate directions. Like, all my sculptors are in New Zealand. It's, it's really strange. So, <laughs> I've got a pension for the guys down under. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, so, what else do you have in the works right now? Any, anything you <clears throat> want to um, preview? The other thing in the, uh, the War of Ashes stuff that is interesting is Evil Hat uh, that does the Fate right. uh, role playing game. Uh, are written most of it. They're an active playtest now on um, what are they calling it? Uh, War of Agoptis, or no, sorry, War of Ashes, Fate of Agoptis, right? Fate. Um, and that should be targeted maybe end of the year, like December or January. Oh, okay. Um, they're sort of tweaking it a little bit that um, they're not making a miniatures game. I don't want to speak for them, but they're trying to integrate the possibility of using miniatures a little more, and so that's sort of a, an experiment in that, um, which is why I'm interested in it, right? That's a whole new crowd of folks that always come up and look at our figures and like, oh, this is for a miniatures game? And I'm always like, well, but you could, you could use it in a role-playing game. I've got these cute little bunnies that make great D&D &D party members. Right. Um, we've got these mice, I've got this, you could use them, whatever, and so this I can actually have an RPG in the booth. Yeah. And then you made figures for uh, the board game that's kind of been gradually yes. coming yeah. up, so, Camp Grizzly. Yep. So there's Camp Grizzly from Ameritrash. Uh, a good friend of mine, Jason, uh, kickstarted it mm -hmm. uh, however many months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're producing all the figures. There are going to be 20 figures in the end. Um, we had the first set, the basic set here at KubaCon, so that people that had Kickstarter could pick it up or just purchase it, mm -hmm. uh, which is the first seven figures. It's Otis, who's the Slasher main killer, right. and then the first six uh, counselors. So, yeah. Yeah, I've enjoyed the game in each iteration, and the figures just add that much more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it's, you know, uh, they demo it right outside our booth here at yeah. KubaCon. Uh, and at other conventions. And there's always cheering coming from the table, right? Nowhere else in the room yeah. is there cheering, but there's regularly cheering coming from that table. Yeah, it's a fun game, and those will add to the visceral experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's like they're not figures, they're not all carrying weapons and guns and that sort of thing. So I think they're also nice, a lot of people are interested in them. They're just nice survivor figures, right? It's a girl with a flashlight or a guy running or whatever, right? So they're nice to get figures that aren't decked out in survival gear. Although I like survival gear, but yeah. Or holding swords and axes and shields. Exactly, exactly. And what else do we need to touch on? Are, is, is there anything else coming up, or should we wait until next time? Maybe we should wait until next time. Okay. There's, there's, there's some good stuff There's other up. things, but... Yeah. We should wait until next time. Okay. Let's cool. do that. Thanks a lot, Josh. Thank you.